everybody. Thank you for joining our webinar today. I see a lot of you guys are trickling in from different parts of the country. It's a pleasure to see you guys. We already have a lot of you signed in here, so we're going to go ahead and get started. So thank you for being part of this webinar. And this webinar today, it's a very interesting topic because it's how to get 75 or more free roofing leads a month using SEO. It's something that we do a lot for our clients here. We take a lot of pride in knowing the fact that our clients do enjoy getting over 75 leads and free leads at that. And when we say free, we're not necessarily just talking about the fact that, you know, yes, they are paying for the service, but they're not paying for the lead themselves. And that's very important because again, at the end of the day, the strategy that I'm going to show you today, you're going to go ahead and have Google do all the heavy lifting for you. And you're going to be ranking position number one, high on the search results page as well too. And this way you don't have to worry about spending a single dime on getting somebody to call your business. So without further ado, let's start getting into the presentation. So who is this presentation for? So this presentation for is for any roofing company or any sort of roofing contractor or even a home service provider or a contractor who just wants to generate more online visibility and leads. If you want your graph to look like this, this presentation is for you. Showing continuous growth, showing incremental increases on everything that you do. And if you want your graph to continuously have that growth, this presentation is for you. It's for any roofer home service provider, contractor. If you're in a local service business that does want to offer something or some sort of service for a home or commercial building, you're tired of being online, have zero visibility, and you want your graphs to start populating, this presentation is for you as well. If you want to make massive jumps on Google with your keyword rankings and everything that you're doing with your brand visibility, this presentation is also for you as well too. And if you want leads, exactly like this, verified leads of real legitimate customers coming to you via the website or phone calls from your Google My Business profile, this presentation is for you. Now, a little bit about me. I'm Rant. Pleasure to meet every single one of you guys. Again, thank you for attending this webinar. So I have over 15 years of experience doing SEO and marketing. I'm the SEO director here at Roofing Marketing Pros. And again, the strategy that I'm going to show you here is something that you're going to see that is more of a modern process. I've seen the ins and outs on how SEO has changed. Now with the implementation on AI, it's completely changed the landscape as well too. And probably a lot of the things that you even see online as well too. And also it influences your mind on how you're buying things online, even relaying the information. I've seen the changes from it. We've here at Roofing Marketing Pros, we have all the bells and whistles when it comes down to certifications. And we do take a lot of pride in knowing that we do have a strong team behind me. So shout out to the RMP SEO team. Without you guys, this presentation wouldn't be available and we wouldn't even be able to show the good metrics that we're going to have today. So a little bit about the company really quick. And again, nothing here is for sale. Just want to let you guys know that you guys are more than welcome to get a second opinion on your campaign or anything like that, but there's nothing for sale here. It's strictly information. I just want you guys to see a new modern strategy that you guys can do yourself. Or if you want to hire in-house, or if you just want a second opinion, it's entirely up to you. Reach out to us. But what I'm going to show you is strictly information. RMP was founded by 2017 by Mauricio Cardinal. So Big shout out to you as well, Mauricio Cardinal. Thank you for allowing me to spearhead this website. It's my absolute pleasure to be here. He founded the company back in 2017. He was a roofer, so he is very familiar with how roofers think, what roofers are selling, and who the clientele is as well too. Now, thankfully, with our knowledge of the roofing industry and our knowledge of marketing, we've been able to generate over 150,000 inbound leads for all of our clients. And that's equated to $500 million in sales, over $500 million in sales. You too could be part of this statistic as well too. Just follow the strategy and you'll get there as well. So mm -hmm. what makes this whole entire process different? So what makes this process different is A, we understand SEO. You understand the importance of SEO and everything that you do for SEO is about creating that trust, that credibility, that, that trust factor with your audience. Now, for some of you that don't know what SEO stands for, it stands, it's short for search engine optimization, and it's very important to your business. And there's a reason why it's very important to your business. So we're going to talk a little bit more about it later on, but it's the difference between creating a shopping list for your customers and also makes a big difference because you're creating that trust factor with your customer audience 
it also makes your sales process significantly easier. And not only that, they're going to come and buy only from you. So let's talk a little bit about how everything's changed in the landscape a little bit. So what do we know here at Roofing Marketing Pro? So we know the changes. We know the algorithm. We know what Google's looking for. Now, this is what I want you guys to take away from this entire presentation. Everything that I'm going to show you today is all about creating that value, creating that trust, and just resonating with your audience. You can't just throw out the content using AI content just for the sake of throwing it out there. It has to be thrown out there with intent, with a purpose. Are you addressing the user concerns? Are you getting all the verified information? Do you sound like an expert? Are you coming off as an expert as well too? Do you know what you're talking about when it comes to either roofing, contracting, uh, any sort of commercial properties as well too? Do you know the materials of the buildings? These are things that Google looks for. It's looking for an algorithm ranking factor that is a set of four criteria that you do have to meet, which is the E-E-A-T. It's short for E. Now, what that acronym stands for is experience, expertise, authority, and trustworthiness. So everything that we're going to go about today, if you look on your right-hand side, is about creating that trust factor. And how does that relate to this image on the right-hand side? If you look all the way at the top at the search query, it's roof repair. Now, granted, of course, the first thing you're going to see is all the paid ad stuff. But then what do you see down there? You're going to start seeing the local business. Now, what is this feature? Because it's more of a modern feature. It's been around for quite some time now and everything. But a lot of us don't really think about it. When we think about position one, we're thinking about position one where that Yelp listing is all the way at the bottom of the page. So position one is not really position one anymore. What you're seeing there with the businesses is what's called a SERP feature. Now, so what is a SERP? A SERP feature is what took place of the top one or top result of Google. It's no longer enough to just have your website as position one. And what was used to be known as position one on Google, if you look on the right-hand side with the video, that it's going to loop and you're going to go ahead and see that there. The highlighted box indicates position one of the actual website listing. So the search term here is, how do I know I have a roof leak? You see an AI SERP feature, which SERP is short for search engine results page. It's Google's way of actively giving you that information that you're looking for in a more direct manner, because at the end of the day, Google's all about credibility. They're all about creating trust even within their own platform as well too. So when you have a platform and a search engine, you have to have a purpose. And the purpose is the SERP features, provide credible information. So when you have a search query like this, you're going to see there's going to be multiple SERP features. You're going to see the informational SERP feature. You're going to see the featured snippet, the AI overview. And of course, you're going to see the local business pack, which you as a service provider, you want to have that one. So just touching up on that on the order of operations, because it's very big and it's central to the ideology of everything that we do for our customers with our SEO strategy is we want to win you as many SERP features as possible. So when you're looking at Google, paid ads is always going to be the top first. And then after that, it's going to be all those organic results. Now, remember, I'm saying organic results over organic listings because now there's a difference. Organic listings is your website, and that's underneath the SERP features. Organic results, that's what shows up first directly under the paid ads. Now, we're going to talk more about what each one of these SERP features are. And the one that you really want to win is this local business pack. Now, this local business pack is directly tied not only to your website, but it's also directly tied to your Google business profile. So it's very important for you to have your Google business profile optimized. We have an entire webinar created on it on how to optimize your Google business profile. And you can even get leads just from that alone in general. And those are also free leads as well, too. It's part of what's more of a local SEO strategy, but you're a local service provider. So since you are a local service provider, you want to land on this SERP feature. Because if you look at the search term all the way at the top, so Roof Repair Miami, you're going to see the paid ads. And then right underneath it, you're going to see the first three most credible sources that Google says, hey, you know what? You need to buy from them. Now, there's something very important to take away from here. You see the search term is Roof Repair. Now, right there under TNS Systems, you're going to notice that Google is actively indexing the review from a customer that says the crew did a great repair. That's Google's way. And if you notice that repair within that review is highlighted, that's Google's way of making the connection between not only your review, but also the keyword search term. 
So you got to remember that everything you do online, whatever kind of content you put out there is always going to have a purpose. Even what clients say about you has to have a purpose. Now, it's a very big misconception. So a lot of customers, they come to us and they tell us all the time, like, hey, you know what? I have 500 reviews. How come I'm not blowing everybody out of the water? Okay, you have 500 reviews, but what if like 80% of those are literally just five stars with zero text? That's no longer enough. So again, here's a perfect example of how you can beat your competition. So again, just using the term roof repair, this is Roof Repairs Kendall by RCNM. If you notice, Google is using an organic review that says they did a fantastic job with my roof repair. Now, this company listing only has 35 reviews, but if you look at A&E Brothers a little bit lower down, they have 372 reviews. If you do a little bit more of further research and digestion into both of these uh, accounts, what are you going to see? A&E has a massive amount of five-star reviews, but a lot of them are just going to be five stars. So whenever you go out to the property of the homeowner, the commercial property uh, decision maker, or whether he's the building manager, whatever it may be, if they're going to leave you a review, tell them to not just leave you a five-star review. Tell them to incorporate something about your service, whether it was a repair, maintenance, doesn't matter. Just make sure there is a relation to you and your service. Make sure they're saying something about you. Now, why is it important that we want the local map pack? Again, it's very important because you're local. So when we're looking at roof repair, at that same search term, Google doesn't really know, are you just looking for a service provider? Are you looking for information? So what's going to end up happening? It's going to give you all the paid ads first, then the local map pack. And then if you see at the bottom, it's also going to give you another serve feature, which is the people ask serve feature, because that's Google's way of trying to figure out what exactly are you trying to do with the search query. And then underneath that, that's where the new position one now comes into play. So it's very important that you understand the order of operations on how you're going to be promoted online so that we understand what you need to do for your strategy and the way how you land these serve features, specifically the local map pack is by optimizing your Google business profile. Now, there's also a very important part. Your website is absolutely crucial as well, too. Everything that you do on your website also has a relation to your Google business profile. So, for example, if you're looking here, all of our customers, we noticed that over 60% of all the searches that go into any single one of our clients is going to be organic based. Granted, you are a local provider, you're a service provider. Not many people know your full scope of work and chances are not many people know that they even require your service. So here with Bruce Ride Don, a customer of ours in Marietta, Georgia. So the term here that we're looking at is commercial roofing. So why is it that they rank number one? You're going to create that sense of trust with the customer. So if you read the meta description, it says contact our commercial roofing company at X phone number to schedule a free consultation in Marietta, Georgia. Underneath it, if you're looking at FGA roofing, it just says time to get a roof replacement in Marietta, question mark. Mm, are you asking me if I need one or are you telling me, hey, if I need one, I can come to you. That is the difference with creating that value in that persona. And it does influence the media or or rather your, your buyer persona on who is going to come out to you. Okay. So when you're formulating your content, when you're formulating your meta descriptions and even your page titles as well too, you want to make sure that it's actively addressing what your target audience needs. In this case, this is commercial roofing. Now, look at also the difference between the page title. For Roost by Dawn, it says Marietta, Georgia, commercial roofing excellence. Okay, if I'm looking for a commercial roofing in my property, I know that I can go to them. What is the difference between them and FGA roofing? Under them, FGA roofing just says shingle and roof repair and installation company, Marietta, Georgia. Problem is, is that it's just going to a generic roof repair replacement page, and it could just be talking about commercial and residential together combined. Maybe it's not really clear and consistent. But when we did the, the content for Roost by Dawn, we created a specific page for that location with commercial roofing in mind. So it is all about commercial roofing. It is the quickest way to tell Google, we provide commercial roofing. We are located in this area. We are the trustworthy source. That's what you want to do. You want to make sure that your content has value. Now, why is SEO very important? It's very important in the sense for your business, because when you have a paid ads campaign, 
you see four or five listings of five different providers. They're paying for it. So not only are you spending money on a paid ads account, but you're also creating the shopping list syndrome for yourself. So not only are they calling you, but they're also calling the four other providers. And we know that the first person on property on site is going to be the one to win the job. Now, how is that different with an organic search? An organic search is usually a more broader target audience. Yes, it does target and help influence users who do actively need your service right now. And that's where the paid ads campaign also comes in as well too. But it also targets more of the bottom of the funnel. It targets the middle and the high as well too. It's people who are still thinking about it. Maybe they're trying to do it on their own and they think that they can do it on their own, but they find information on your site and they're like, yeah, you know what? I just need to call an expert. Let me have them do it. It's organic SEO is about taking the person who was on the fence Maybe they didn't know that they needed your business. They're thinking about it. They kind of want to do it themselves. And then taking that person and converting them to only come to you. Because if they're calling you and they found you organically, 90% of the time, they're already sold on you. So it makes your sales process that much easier. And you will notice a difference between customers. Now, so why is it that sites are, are heavily recommended with uh, SERP features? So if you're looking here, we're looking at a search term. So how do I know I have a roof leak? Again, this is page one of Google search results on the right-hand side. You're going to see this long page and everything. We're going to digest it. Here's the very important part. You don't just win one SERP feature. You win multiple. And that's our intent here at Roofing Marketing Pros. Whenever we're doing our SEO strategies, we're never just trying to attack one. We're always trying to attack multiples. Okay. So now looking at some of these. So like this is one of the AI featured snippets. So in this case, still the same search term. How do I know I have a roof leak? Again, with this here, it's going to show you a couple of pictures, which is what the image pack is for. And then of course, if you read some of these, so like damage flashing, how do I know I have a roof leak? Well, maybe the damage flashing can allow water to penetrate into your home. I didn't think about that. As a homeowner, I'm going to, I'm going to want to know more information about what is a flashing you're going to click on that link and where's it going to go to, to your site. Who are they going to call if they have an issue? You. Do they think as a consumer, are these the only signs? Probably not. And who's going to know better than you? So it's very important that you land on these search features because this is the first thing that Google sees. We're going to take another one and we're going to take it a step further. So this one here is the featured snippet. So the seven warning signs to indicate you may have a roof leak. The fact that it even says warning on it, it's already, hey, you know what? I probably don't even want to wait, sit around. I need to call somebody. This here is a primary example of a featured snippet. It's taking actual information from the website and posting it on Google. And again, it's one of the first things that you actively see already. So when you have this information in front of you, it's already shaping the mind of, you know what? I know who I'm going to call. I already know who I'm going to buy from. They have all this credible information on the website. And you know what? Google saying that they're the verified source. Chances are they're also going to vet your Google business profile. They're going to see your reviews. They're going to see what people are saying about you. They're going to buy from you. So it's very important. And this is a statistic that we went and, and we did. And it's through Internet Live Stats. Very credible source here. And now 14.6. Let me rephrase that. SEO deals close and have a higher close rate at 14.6. Google ads, and just being very specific here, have a 2.7 close rate out of 3.5 billion searches. There's a big disparity between the paid ads and also between the close rate of an organic deal. So it's 2.5 versus 14.6. It is a big disparity. So again, if you do SEO properly, if you have everything into implemented properly, you're being found on the SERP features, you're also getting on the listings, you're winning multiple SERP features, you have your Google business profile optimized, for your keywords and your service, you're going to notice a big increase in everything that you get on your return for your conversions. Now, I want you to meet a case study here. The case study that we're going to talk about here is Panda Contractors. Now, so we did everything that we're going to talk about on this presentation, and this is just for the month of July. So July, 2024. So it is 12 form fills via the website, 75 calls to the Google business profile listing and 28 calls via the website. That is a total of 115 free leads for this customer here. Now, when we say free, remember, the more important thing to remember is that these free leads, they did not have to pay a single dollar to be listed at the top of Google search results. 
the important thing here is that they allowed Google to do all the heavy lifting for them, promoted them on the serve features, and they ended up getting all these results. Now we're going to look at another case study here too as well. This is one of our other customers here in Rinaldi Roofing. It's very important to realize that you're a service provider. So with an e-commerce platform, if you look on the graph on the left-hand side, you're going to notice that that purple line and that blue line is going to have a much tighter grouping. In this case, for your service provider, let's be realistic. You're not necessarily selling a can of soda or a bag of chips. It's, it's not just you know something small. You're selling a high-priced item to a property owner, and you're not just going to let anybody walk on your property because it's your property. You invested into it. You're going to take care of it. You're going to be very mindful about who comes onto your property. So when you're looking at your campaigns, you want to make sure that your graph, not only is it growing exponentially and that you're having that earthquake pattern where it's growing in both blue and purple, you also want to make sure, again, continuously see what kind of content you're pushing out and how it's reading for your target audience. So like take Rinaldi Roofing on the right-hand side. So our team's roofing expertise can handle any roofing project you have in mind. Fill out a contact form to request reliable Royal Island roofing services today. That makes a huge difference and creates more trust as opposed to a provider underneath where it says, we offer wood shingles, standing seam, metal roof installation, and slate, so forth and so forth and so forth. And I'm just telling you that I offer all these materials and everything. I'm not going to give you the rest of the meta description. That sounds really salesy. So remember that a good sales rep will make you feel like you made the right decision. A sleazy salesman will make you feel at the end of the day like you got got. And that's what you want to avoid because at the end of the day, it is your reputation online. So here's where a lot of our strategy comes into play. You want to create location pages for yourself and you want to segment them into individual location pages based on the services that you provide. So this is Acker Roofing, another one of our customers in Concord, California. So if you look at the first keyword here, which is roofing in Dublin. So if you're looking at the position column, it's from position number 18 all the way to position number three. And if you look at the comparison, the comparison is from the month of July to who we are now in August. So in one month, it made a 15 position jump. Now, it's very important that you realize that at the URL, all the way at the right-hand side, it's Dublin-Residential-Roofing. So it is a page specifically for Dublin, California in pertaining to residential roofing. Now, you also want to make sure that you have other secondary keywords that do increase that experience for the customer and also other search terms that can populate into it. So if you look in the middle of the page, you have roof replacement Dublin. So be very mindful of your keywords because something like this can make a substantial difference on the same page using a different search term. It went from position number 61 to position number three within a one month time span. So it is very important that yes, you do optimize your website. You are using proper keywords, but again, what got Acker Roofing to the top and got them on page one of Google search results is that when we did the research for their content, we did local research, how the storms, weather patterns, geographical territories do affect the services that Acker Roofing provides. And it's not just residential roofing because they also provide commercial roofing as well too. They have strict building codes specifically since they sit on a fault line. They have to make sure that the roofing is up to a specific code and standard. They're limited to only certain amounts of materials or certain types of materials as well too. And of course, they do have different storms than let's say a stay in Florida, or maybe even in Minnesota. So again, having that research when you're creating your content will make a huge difference in your position jumps. Now, you also want to make sure that your Google business profile is getting the most amount of exposure when it comes to it. So use your service tag wisely, make sure that you have your keywords and make sure again, anything that you do with your responses from customers all the way down to what they say about you, make sure that it has content that has a relation to your service. So here's a good example. So clear choice, another one of our clients in Iowa. So where search term on the left-hand side is window installation. So why do they populate first? Well, simple. So not only is there 
service tag, which if you look on the bottom right hand side, it says window installation service in Urbandale, Iowa. So not only did we set their service tag as window installation, so there's a relation between that keyword and that search term, but also on the top right hand side, if you look a one Brian Burrier said we had an excellent experience working with clear choice exteriors, we decided to replace nine outdated windows. Now granted, I know it's not the exact same keyword between window installation and window those by itself, but Google sees the relation between the two of them. And that's what you want. The reason why clear choice does get the nod in this case and has more reviews. And this is a good example, but even right underneath it, direct egress and, con and construction only has 40 reviews and they beat superior window and window systems. Why? Because of the value that they're providing within their content. So again, anything that you do when it comes down to your Google business post, your description, on, on Google business, when it comes down to how you respond back to your customers and what they say about you, it all has a correlation and a connection. Now, you also want to use local keywords as well, too, even within your blogs, inside your page content as well, too. This is one of our customers as well out of uh, Raleigh, North Carolina, which is Goliath. So with Goliath, when you're adding value to your content, make sure that you're actually talking about these things. So like, if you look at the title on the right-hand side, Rally's Guide, Siding Repair Techniques for Enduring Weather. You don't just want to have AI throw you information about the topic because A, it's going to be very repetitive. B, it's not going to have any sort of factual data. And even GPT and all these other models will say, please check the data because we have been known to be wrong. Look out for that disclaimer the next time you use it. But you got to make sure that when you formulate this content, you are actually talking about siding repair techniques, how it relates to the weather. Since the title says repair techniques in relation to siding and how it relates to the weather and how it can endure the weather, that blog has to be about expert tips on what to do with your siding and how that siding repair or even that material is going to help you that your home or your business with siding endure that weather. Now, there's a way on how you can attack these keywords. So when you're running your keyword research, we use a tool called Ahrefs. It's a paid SEO tool. We're very fond of it. In this case, when you're running your research, you always got to make sure that you look at every single aspect of the services that you provide. So in this case, don't just look at it as residential roofing or home roofing. Break it down into subsections as well, too. So this one here is metal roofing. Now, the metal roofing does have a traffic potential of 12K users on a monthly basis searching for it or any relation to it, but also it is ranked really hard or hard. In this case, it's a 46 out of 100. So how do we attack this keyword? Something like this. I don't want to discourage you from doing it because what we do for our customers is not only do we attack hard keywords, medium keywords, and the lower keywords, but we attack them in a very interesting manner where we create a spider web. So what we do is we put the primary keyword in the center. And then we start attaching legs on how we're going to lead the customer back over using internal links and also linking back over to certain pages with locations. And that's adding legs back on that spider web. So focus on this. Metal roofing is at the center of the spider web. And if you look down there on the bottom left-hand side, it says keyword ideas. We're looking at metal roofing panels. Now with metal roofing panels, it's going to be on the lower end of the spectrum when it comes to keyword difficulty. So you can attack this one relatively easy. Still 6K in traffic potential. Now, how do you attack it? Metal roofing panels, you can talk about, you can talk about it in many different ways. You can write a blog about metal roofing panels versus a shingle panel. You can talk about the metal roofing panels and how they absorb heat. That's another way of talking about it. You can talk about metal roofing panels and the installation process. But what does that relate to Google? It relates that information back over to the primary keyword. That's how you start winning this root keyword. So again, you do have to make sure that your lower ranking keywords or that lower hanging fruit does have that value, generates all that trust. And once it starts generating all that information and value and trust with Google, it just capitalizes into the primary keyword and you start winning a lot of these search features. Now, use these keywords as well too when you're optimizing your Google business profile. So citing contractors, if you're going to use citing contractors on your Google business profile, make sure that you use it also on your website because what do you see here? So for SW roofing, a contractor, which is, one of our customers as well too, and they rank number one, you notice that there's a button there at the bottom where it says website. And again, 
even though the customer is looking for siding contractors, the mere fact that Google is actively pay attention to your account, they're indexing the review that says, I wouldn't consider anyone else to do roofing work. But the fact that somebody is saying, I wouldn't consider anybody else is very big for your persona. You want to make sure that what you do online and your keywords and your content is not only both a generating trust, but again, having that value and that connection between one another. It is absolutely important because this right here is part of the local SERP feature. When you click on it and you also see more listings as well too, it'll give you all the listing providers. You want to be on number one. You don't just want to be top three. Now the power of reviews. This is a touchy subject and we're going to get into it, but still I, I'm very fond of talking about this because I, I understand the roofing industry is the second most complained about industry here in the U.S. market. And I get it. I get it. It's a tough job. Trust me, Mauricio was there. He talks about it all the time as well, too. It's it's very, very, very interesting because the way you respond to reviews online shapes the persona of who's going to buy from you or not. So let me give you a couple of examples here. So another SW Roofing, same client that we were just talking about right now. It's statistically proven that 92% of customers who are going to buy from you, they've already looked at your Google business profile, especially through organic resources. Now, here's the, the gimmick. When you're responding, try, try to be personable. And, you know, I, I get it. Sometimes the customer isn't always right. Absolutely get that. But that doesn't mean that we have to throw out the dirty laundry. So we've seen the worst of the worst, and we've seen some good negative responses. I'm going to give you an example of one of our customers, which is a Stellar Roofing out of New York. It's very interesting. They're not accepting blame or anything like that. So when you respond, you don't have to say to a negative review, hey, you know what? I apologize for doing this, and I take full responsibility. What can we do to make it better? That's not what I want you guys to go for. What I simply want you guys to do so that way you don't have a negative outlook, because remember, everybody has eyes on you. It's not just Google. And once these reviews stay here, they stick. It is very hard to get these down. You have to go through a lengthy process. You can claim them, combat them, do everything that you want to do. But chances are Google will remove them. Sometimes they reappear. So if you're having that issue as well, too, I suggest you watch our Google Business Profile webinar optimization, and we talk a lot about that in there as well, too. But in this case, I would much rather you respond to a negative review and say, Mr. Customer, please give me a call back at X, Y, at 12345 number, and we can go ahead and get more details and clarity about the situation. You're neither saying you're right. You're neither saying I was wrong. You're not saying I'm sorry. You're not accepting blame. All you're asking the customer to do is give us a call. We're going to go ahead and see what we can do for you. That's it. And the reason why is because we've seen the worst of the worst responses. Now, it does make a difference. I'm not going to name any names or anything like that, but we had a client one time where he decided to throw out that dirty laundry out there. And we literally saw the graph. It was going up like this. And then he responded to that one negative review and just systematically just started dropping and dropping and dropping and dropping. And it doesn't matter what we did until we got that review taken down. It wasn't then until we saw that graph go right back up. I'll tell you, you guys shop on Amazon. You guys shop on all these major e-commerce platforms as well, too. You guys are always going to look at reviews. The same thing goes for your business. So I get it. Customers are not always right, but don't throw out that dirty laundry. Now, we're going to talk about a very big, important subject here. So this is the impact of artificial intelligence within our digital landscape because it has made a difference. So don't just throw out the content out there. Remember. Yes, content is king. But what I want you to realize, and remember, we spoke about this earlier on in the presentation with EEAT, that experience, expertise, authority, and trust, that last one, trust, is very important to Google because the trust factor doesn't come in unless you have the remaining other three sets of criteria. The one thing that I want you to take into consideration, and this is the biggest thing that I will ask you to take away from this entire presentation is, yes, content is king. But trust and value is the entire kingdom. And that is essential. So again, when you're writing your on-page content, your blogs or anything like that, and we'll just give you one here as an example. It's a blog that we wrote and it ranks really highly for multiple search features. Mm -hmm. It's Savannah Roof insula Insulation and Ventilation Tips. Key Benefits 
and tips. Make sure that that blog is actively talking about the benefits of roof insulation and ventilation, tips on how it can be installed, what to do if you're trying to repair for it, what materials to look out for, so forth and so forth. You have to have actual details, factual data. Google is using an AI bot crawler so that way it can find all this information better so it can recognize AI content when it does see it. But again, there's ways on how you can formulate your own AI content without having to write things organically and still get by with Google. What's the whole purpose of this? You want to be on the featured snippet. This is Google's holy grail. It's literally finding information on your website for a specific question. And again, just going back to that term, like, how do I know I have a roof leak? It'll give you all those seven signs. And that was from one of our customers as well to one of the blogs that we wrote. And again, who does it go back to? It goes back to your website. This is what you want. You want to land on this featured snippet because sometimes this featured snippet has been called position number zero. And the reason why it's been called position number zero is because it also shows up first before the Google ads. You want to be here. You want to make sure that you do have this featured snippet attached to your profile. Now, how do we attack this featured snippet? So simple on a blog, you can add a list of tips. And again, if you're talking about roof maintenance as well, too, you want to do a, a correlation between some of the other materials, just like we saw the other, the other slide previously. So like, if you look at tip number two, and we're talking about roof maintenance, tip number two says, keep your gutters clean and free of debris to prevent water buildup that can damage your roof and lead to leaks, especially after a typical summer storm in Madisonville. So if the customer is in Madisonville, doesn't matter whether it's the summertime or if it's anything else in relation to it, but if they're actively shopping for gutters, maybe have a question about gutters, this can populate in the featured snippet. Or if they're looking about how to maintain their roof or kind of the signs to look for about roofs and everything, this entire list will populate as well too. Granted, Google will put it in their own format. That's more than fine. That's what the whole AI sni uh, featured snippet is for. But the whole point is, is that it reverts them back over to your website. And again, what do we do all the way at the top? For all our customers, we put a banner on the site that says free gutters with a fortified roof. Get in touch now. That's specific to this client. Whatever your offer is, we'll also put that offer at the top of the site. Now, how else do we attack this featured snippet? So through commonly asked questions as well to addressing the user's concern, again, creating that sense of trust. So. First one, what are UV blocking window treatments? You give a nice, long, thought out, actual response to this. UV blocking window treatments are products or coverings designed to prevent ultraviolet rays from penetrating through windows, so forth and so forth. You can finish the paragraph. But again, the whole point is, is that when you're pushing out the content, whether you're writing it organically or you're doing it through AI, do your research, make sure that you incorporate facts, make sure you incorporate details, make sure that the actual content has notable mentions. This is what Google likes to see. The more things you have on your site that do make you come off as a actual expert and you're giving an expert recommendation about this, you are going to win these featured snippets. You're going to be above the paid ads, you're going to show up top one. And again, there's multiple different SERP features that you can land with this specific set of content. That's what you want. Win as many SERP features as possible. Now, this is our process at Roofing Marketing Pros. And I know it looks like, whoa, there's a lot on the screen going on, right? But this is how we can create quality in bulk. A lot of people will just tell you, yeah, you know what? Just do a thousand blogs through AI in one hour or through a day and everything. That strategy does no longer works. The strategy in place of posting a thousand blogs on a on a day to day basis, it used to work back in the inception of AI, but again, it had no value. It was just generic content, it wasn't really addressing anything for the actual audience. Now, where Google cracked down on it is a they're looking at the time, they're looking at what is feasible for a human to post within a single day and actively write as well too. But it's also looking for all these other things. And I put it on the image all the way at the bottom where it's looking for the search intent of it. It's looking at the secondary keywords. It's what kind of tone of voice do you have? Do you, are you giving it facts? And these are some of the modules that we have on our actual process. We're addressing frequently asked concerns. We're giving it a list of handy tips all the way down to the actual keyword to use. Because again, it's very important that you do create that sense of trust you can still use this process to create your own, write your own, your own AI generated content. But even through this process, 
the process sounds very, or, or the content sounds very organic, very trustworthy. This is how we've been able to create bulk content for all of our packages, get our clients ranking. And again, they start getting a lot of calls, a lot of list, a, a lot of listings in page one. And that's ultimately what we want. Win as many SERP features, create that content, create that value. Now, we just spoke on this, which is the keyword research or excuse me, the keyword search intent. There's a difference here because each one of them, there's four specific ones. And if you notice within the definitions, each one of them has their own purpose. So like for roofing, for roof installation, the first keyword, it carries a commercial intent. So a lot of people will maybe try to write a blog about it and maybe try to give information about it. That's the wrong way to use the keyword. In this case, roof installation, since it carries a commercial brand, the user already wants to investigate a brand or service. So this keyword would be more suitable for a product page, maybe a location page and say, you know, let's say you're in Minnesota. So I'm XYZ roofer out of St. Paul, Minnesota, and we offer roof installation for businesses, homes. That would be more proper keyword use. Now for TPO, if you notice TPO carries both or multiple in this case, because there are some keywords that will have more than two. Some of them may even have all of them to be hundred percent honest. It just depends on how you run your keyword research and which keywords you're trying to target. So TPO roofing carries informational and commercial. So not only can you use it for a location page and also a service page, but you can also use it in the sense of a blog as well too. What is TPO roofing? What is this? What does it do for the home? How is it different from shingles? And the reason why it carries informational intent is because more than likely nine out of 10 homeowners probably don't even know what TPO means. If it's an acronym to the letter stand for something, again, there's a reason why it carries that informational search intent. And what does this go back to? Somebody trying to find information about what is this material? And if they find your site, they're coming to you for it. Guess what? You just sold them a TPO roof because now they understand it. Now they have that mentality of like, I know what it does. I like it. I need it. Let's go ahead. Let's call this roofer. Let's get it done. And again, that's the whole purpose of SEO, making your sales process that much easier, but also you won't have to pay for any of these leads. Now, this is something that's not really often talked about a lot. So when it comes down to the images themselves, you want to make sure that you're geotagging your images. The geotagging of images is where you embed the longitude and latitude coordinates of your location within a lot of these images. So all these images here, whether it's on your blogs, whether it's on the homepage of your site, specific pages on your site, you want to sprinkle them. You don't necessarily have to do all of them, but the more you do, obviously the better, but you want to find the origin points of the areas that you want to service. And now what's the beauty part about it? It's another form, a part of structured data where it's hidden, but it's also telling Google, Hey, you know what? I service this area. I'm part of this area. This area is native to me. It's part of the best practices. It's a very hidden feature when it comes down to SEO and also geofencing and, and geotagging images. You want to do things like this. You want to make sure that you're putting yourself in your local area. So now we're going to talk about another case study because this also leads to another customer, Imperial Roofing. Still same strategy. Everything that we've done for them, this they're in Texas, but again, we've done the same things for them. Google business posts, blog posts. We've done all the optimizations. We've gotten them customer reviews, responded to them, keywords, built them a brand new site, everything. So what did they get to enjoy? So last month, again, July, 2024, 23 form fills via the website, 47 calls to the Google business listing, 15 calls via the website. That's 85 free leads. And again, you don't pay for organic leads. Yes, you do pay for the service, but you do not pay for organic leads. Now, all this is good and dandy, and we covered a lot of the strategy, but it's for not if you don't have optimal performance for your website. And let me explain for that. So nowadays, everybody carries a phone. Think about how much time you take on your phone. So 53% of mobile users leave a page that takes longer to load than three seconds. Okay. Short attention span. We live in a more digital modern technological era now. So everything's got to be quick, 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 quick. So if your website is taking more than three seconds to load, you just gave your competitor an advantage. Okay. Whether they found you through Google, my business, or whether they found you through any other sort of means, paid ads, doesn't matter what it is. If it takes longer than three seconds, you've already lost your audience. And it's very important because you can have all these bells and whistles for SEO and everything. But if you're not implementing your structured data, your structured data is where you make it easy, 
on a code level sense for Google to crawl your website, find your information and actively post it, you're not going to get far. Google's just not going to be able to crawl your content. We do it a lot. It's part of our technical SEO um, portion of things. And that's a whole nother blog, a whole nother on our site. There's That's also a whole nother webinar that we have as well too. Now, always look at the mobile response. You got to think about the way how you navigate a website is different on your desktop than how you do on a website. So it's got to be short, clear, quick, and response to the site. Remember, mobile is super important because that's where significant amounts of searches. It's a it's almost an independent market in its own. It's about 73%, 63 to 70% of global website traffic. So now you can use Google's own page speed insight score. So that way you can vet your own information. If you look, these are three separate customers. They're all our customers. But if you look all the way at the bottom left hand corner, you're looking at the speed index. Speed index is part of that structured data and how quickly it can find all that information. And we're talking about Google here. So if it takes longer than two seconds, even three seconds for Google to crawl your information within those two to three seconds, they've already crawled thousands of other competitors and found other competitor information to relay apart from you. You definitely don't want to be there. So use Google PageSpeed Insights to vet your own information, make sure your best practices and also your SEO is up to par. You can also use some of these other tools as well too. So the other tools that you have in place is Screaming Frog, Ahref, SEMrush. All these will diagnose your website, give you a great health score. And of course, it'll even tell you your redirects and also your backlinks. And since we're on the topic of backlinks, one of the things that I'd like to address here is that black backlinks are very crucial for your website. So just to put it into perspective on what a backlink is, let's say you're writing a topic on the latest, you know, gaff shingles and modernizing the trends. And you came up with a new process on how you're going to implement these gaff shingles and you're going to make them top of the line and it's going to be charged at a premium, but the cost outweighs the benefit. Gaff gets a hold of it and they're like, you know what? They're really doing it right. We're going to go ahead and advocate for them. They put it on their site. There's a new trend popping up. You can visit XYZ Roofer. Here's a link to their site. That link right there is now a backlink over to your site. It is telling Google that you have somebody else in the digital space within the same field saying they know what they're talking about. And that's exactly what you want from these backlinks. Now, a lot of these backlinks will organically attach themselves to you, but they'll only attach themselves to you if you have credible, valuable content that Google is actively indexing for. And also the webmaster or the persona of that website does feel like you do have credible information. You can also get these via guest blogging and also influencers. Think about how many unboxing videos you watch on YouTube. You buy a product online, somebody put a video on it. That right there is an influencer. So you can always have good links referring back over to you. The more backlinks you have, incredible ones as well too, because sometimes they can be malicious as well. The better and the higher quality in the backlinks, the more influence you have with Google with somebody saying, hey, you know what? We advocate for this for this contractor. They know what they're doing. Google, you should promote them. They they are the go-to roofer. Google loves to see those kind of things. That's where you want to be. Now, here are some common pitfalls that you definitely want to avoid here. Don't buy the backlinks, okay? It's just, you're manipulating rankings. Don't do keyword stuffing either as well too. Keyword stuffing is where you use the, the primary keyword more than 1% throughout the entire content. So like if it's roof repair, don't make every other sentence start with roof repair because that's just keyword stuffing. And then cloaking, if you're telling somebody that you offer roof repair or let's say you offer free estimates and then within your site, it says free estimates with a down payment, that's cloaking. That's deceptive content. You got somebody to click on your site, but now you're saying something else completely different. And of course, you want to stay away from copied content. The penalties are severe. You will have devaluation. You will have deceptive content. It will be considered plagiarism. And again, if this is the biggest one, in my opinion, if you use keyword stuffing, who's just not going to care about you? They're just going to look at you and be like, you know what? You're just trying to manipulate rankings. I'm not going to pay attention to you. So you definitely don't want to do that. So stay away from those. No. We're going to talk about this here really quickly because we're getting more towards the end of the portion of the presentation. One of the things to take into consideration is that this is the average cost of what an SEO package would be, depending whether you do it in-house, depending on whether you decide to hire an external company, an expert, you want to do it on your own. This is what we saw on the market as well too. The prices are up here for you as well. My personal opinion, I'm always going to say it's always better to hire an expert over just doing it in-house. Sure, you have somebody to yell in-house. But you know what? 
sometimes the cost doesn't outweigh the benefit of having somebody in-house. And we'll touch up on that a little bit more right now. The one thing that I want you guys to take away is that if you do hire in-house and you guys do start doing this on your own, you're going to have to start looking at all your keyword ranking reports, looking at your position changes. And again, the one column that this whole presentation is based on is the column in the middle where it says SF all the way at the top. And why? Because when you hover over it, you want to make sure that you are actively landing on these SERP features. So again, this stems back to that key or that screenshot at the very beginning of the presentation when we were talking about our client, Acker Roofing in California, for roofing companies in Concord, which their point of origin is Concord, California. Not only did they make a position jump from position number 26 to position number six within a time span of that month. So it's a 20 point jump. So they're already being listed on Google page one, one time, but they're also local pack. Okay. And within the top three results, they're also being shown in the featured SERP, the featured SERP feature, which is on the thumbnail pack. And then also if somebody's Googling roofing trends or anything in relation to roofing companies, and they're in California and they're looking for ideas on roofing image pack. So five different avenues on where there are actively being found for one keyword. Doesn't matter that the website is six position number six. What matters is that they're being found in five different avenues on the page one. Now, always use Google Analytics so that way you can see your traffic patterns, looking at your total users, looking at the different diagnoses, but the want you to just take into consideration the graph on the right-hand side. So look at which avenue is generating you the best results. And again, organic search does have a tendency. They can beat out a paid search strategy. And again, you're paying for it, but you're getting a much better value out of organic search. Look at your Google Search Console. Google Search Console is always looking at each one of these pages, which one's generating you the best traffic. And again, a lot of these will stem from your Google Business Profile. So if you look at where it says top pages, the first one, it has a long UTM. But at the very end of it, with that tracking link, it says equals GMB, Google My Business. So short for GMB, dash primary link. That right there has generated 546 clicks for this specific customer stemming back over to the website. Those are the things that you want to have. And that's what I wanted you guys to see. I wanted you guys to see that there's a connection with what you do on your website and your Google business profile. One enhances the other. Now, just finishing up here really quickly, we're going to talk about some frequently asked questions that we get a lot here. So what makes SEO important for roofing companies? It is the most essential thing for your company. And why? Because it's creating trust. It'll make your sales process that much easier because if you have the right content, you're being indexed on Google, you're being found on Google, they're not creating that shopping list for themselves through a paid strategy. So they're not just calling five other contractors, they're calling one, they're calling you. And that's the most important thing. So how long does it take to see results from SEO? Honestly, it really depends. On our platinum packages, we've seen customers get results between three to four months. But again, granted, it also depends on when you launch the campaign. So like if we know winter's coming up and everything, typically it does take a little bit longer until you see the springtime come into play. A lot of, you know, a lot of contractors don't really want to be working on roofs, especially if you're in a cold state or in a snow state. It just, you know. Depends on your demographics as well to the areas that you're targeting, how big of an area you're targeting as well to there's a lot of variables, but typically we normally like to stick into January, February when we start launching new campaigns. So we're very selective when it comes to that. And it's usually around three to four months when we see a really good high level strategy generate a lot of good results. Now, how often should I update my SEO strategy? Small minor updates, you can do those every three every month. High level updates, you want to stick to those every quarter. And the reason why I say every quarter is because you want to have at least three months worth of data before you start making some big changes. So like if you're going to do a lot of redirects or if you're going to change your domain or if you're going to structure a lot of the content within it, try to save those for quarterly. If you're just going to optimize something small here, like a page title or a meta description, or just, you know, kind of change like one word here, maybe a sentence here or two, that's fine. Small little updates. You can do those monthly, but big updates, try to leave those for quarterly. Now, biggest question, is it necessary to hire an SEO expert or can I do it myself? Subjective, really. 
It's up to you. You can either hire an expert such as us, which we know we can generate results, but you can also do it yourself. And if you follow the entire presentation on everything that we just ran through right now, you implement everything possible um, the way how I explained it, you can do this yourself, but there's a lot of time and investment that goes into this. So again, that's where we were talking about the cost outweighing the benefit. Do you want to pay for somebody to do this and you just let the results come in? Or do you want to do this yourself and you also have to run a company on the side? That's where that deciding factor comes into play. With that, guys, I really appreciate the time. Thank you for attending this webinar here. I'm going to leave this here. You can click on this link here, which is roofingmarketingpros.com forward slash calendar. You can schedule a consultation with one of our national consultants. They'll give you a demo on this entire process as well, too. You can get a free SEO report. And again, there's nothing for sale here. This is literally just a consultation. If you're on the fence about your marketing company, or if you're a contractor kind of thinking about doing it yourself, or maybe you just kind of want to get some more information as well, too. That's all this entire webinar is. It's just giving you more information. So if you want to get more, please feel free to schedule a consultation. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to get your feedback as well to grab your free SEO report. There's nothing that you lose from it. You can take it to your existing marketing company if you want, and you're just using it as a second opinion. And maybe we're pointing out some things that maybe they can do better for you. So ultimately it's in your benefit, but ultimately thank you. I appreciate your time. It was a pleasure to be here. Shout out to the RMP SEO team. Without you guys, this work wouldn't be possible and we wouldn't be able to present this metrics today. And a big, big, big thank you to Mauricio Cardinal for allowing me A, to be part of Roofing Marketing Pros, but also B, for allowing me to spearhead this webinar. So with that, guys, thank you so much. I appreciate everybody today. Everybody have a wonderful day.